I'm so happy to see you. I'm happy to see you. It's been two years. I know. I miss seeing you. I miss seeing you too. I don't yeah. know why, because every time we're together, we have so much fun, and we yet do. we don't really. We need to hang out. I agree. More. I'm a great friend. Yes, you are a good friend. Yeah. I am. Okay. I know that was a lot. That was I don't know why you bring this out of me. You bring this out of me. Anger, a lot of anger. No, it's passion. Passion. Yes. Passion. Big difference. Uh, yes, it passionate. is. Passionate. But anyway, but I do love you very much. I love you. Thank okay. You. So uh, let's talk about uh, this documentary. Okay. Yes. It's very. Uh, it's bold and brave. And uh, amazing, because most people are, you were a Scientologist for how many years? Most of my life. Most of your life, you were raised in it. You left three and a half years ago, and uh, you wrote a book, uh, Troublemaker. Yes. And so you do this docu-series, which I saw the first one, and I'm, I can't wait to see all of them. Thank you. Um, but, but it's disturbing, because you unearth some bad things that are happening. And that's what made me want to do the series. It's a, you know, we're doing an eight-part series, and a and is very brave to do it. Um, and the people who are speaking are very brave to do it because there are repercussions to speaking out. And that's why I said, okay, I, I can't sit back. Because I left, I wrote my book, it went to, you know, number, number one. one, which, yeah, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. And it was like, then I was watching, you know, um, high executives, former executives of the church leaving and speaking out about abuses and things that they've experienced while working for the church, and I saw how the church reacted. And I felt I had a responsibility to say, I'm not going to allow you to bully these people who are very brave to come out and tell their stories. Um, and that's for executives, but they're just average parishioners like me who leave and speak out about what they've experienced. They lose their family. Um, and so the church goes after their family to shun their family, and oftentimes, I'm, I'm very lucky that that didn't happen to me. My family chose me. But what about, yes, your family, your mother left with you, uh, but but what about, did they, when you started speaking out and wrote the book and everything, have have you been harassed in any way? Yes, I've been followed. But again, the, the, my story pales in comparison to what happened to other people, how people are bullied into silence. You know, we don't have $3 billion to protect ourselves, right? So what I have is I'm an actress, and I'm able to speak, and I'm able to give a voice to people who might not have an Ellen to go on. Yeah. So um, for that, I, I, I feel lucky, and I feel blessed, and I feel it's kind of what my path is right now. Yeah, well, I, and I agree with you. I think what you're doing is, is, like I said, it's important and it's brave because you have all these high-ranking people who have left, and you, if you watch a 2020 or watch these Correct. specials, you hear them talk. But there are, there are rumors that uh, the reason that most people, especially celebrities, mm -hmm. don't leave is because they have stuff on them. They have dirt on them or secrets. Well, that is true. The church does have all your secrets from when you were a child. But that isn't the reason why people don't leave the church. The people don't leave the church because they actually believe what they're doing is good, which is, it's very hard for me to attack something that I believed in. And I believed in it wholeheartedly my whole life. So it's, it's a difficult position to be in. Um, they believe that they have the answers to life, to help mankind. And so they choose often the church, believing they're saving their family anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to sit back and just go on with my life and let the church, who has $3 billion, bully people, bully victims. Well, they, yeah. Um... Thank you. And they have $3 billion, and, and, and they're because when you're a church, when you're a religion, you don't have to pay taxes, is that right? Correct. So, right. so they are called, but to me, it sounds to me that it's not really a religion. Well, um, right, uh, I agree with you. Although you do, in Scientology, it promotes that you're, you're, they see you as a spiritual being, and so in that way, they're getting away with um, um, being a religion, that they're, they're dealing with you as a spiritual being. Um, but, but isn't everyone a spiritual being? We're all spiritual beings. Right. So why... Th th well, they, they claim that they have the technology to um, um, get you to the highest um, enlightenment of that mm -hmm. spiritual side of you mm -hmm. and to be the best part of you. There's, there's a lot of things that are good in Scientology because I, I wouldn't have been in it. And that's the thing, too, is a lot of people trivialize 
this thing like, oh, it's Xenu and it's a volcano and it's jumping on couches and, and acting crazy. Um, these people are victims. We've been victimized. We believed in something because it starts out very kind of normal. You know, you could be a better Leah. I could be a better mother. I could be a better sister. I could be a better friend. Not to you, because I've been fantastic. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we all want those things. And also, what Scientology offers is a bigger game. You're part of an elite group saving the planet. And that's great, and I know we have to take a break, and that's great, but I think everybody is trying to be a better version of themselves, and everybody is trying to, you know, get yes, to that place. but Scientology says it's the only way. It's right, that's the, the, that's the yes. difference. That's yes. the problem I have with religions that claim that that's the only way to get there. I think right. that we can all get there and do work without owing something or being ostracized from, from our families. I agree. You know, I think, I agree. So, so Thanksgiving is coming up. Are you cooking? Well, yesterday I tried a pecan pie. Mm, I love pecan pie. Do you? Where's the picture? Yeah. I want to see um, it. OK, so. <laughs> no, it does not. OK, it's... but let me tell you something, Ellen. OK, that... mine's on the right, obviously. Uh, yes, we can see which one yours is. <laughs> OK, in my defense, Ellen, OK, so it did say pie pan, cook it in a pie can. So I did, just, I did it in a pan. And uh. apparently, you do have to have a pie pan. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a pizza. Okay. <laughs> I don't good even stuff. cook. I don't bake bit. or anything. Okay. Okay, but it tastes good. And so, because I thought you were going to make fun of it, I brought you a piece uh -huh. in a personalized pan. Of that exact pie? Yes, because I want you to taste it, because I don't want you to tell people that I don't know how to cook. All right. Okay, so try yeah. it. By the way, do you like my cake pan? Yeah, I don't know. It how has to... my name on it. Oh, you oh. know, like in the hall, like yeah. you bring a pie to somebody's house or like something you made, and they're not there to receive you, and you're like, oh, I'm not going to get credit for my big ziti because. <laughs> okay, say how good that is. All right. Do you love it? I really do. Eee! I really do. You it's do. Really, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Yeah, it has... it's, co it's cocoa. It's cocoa. It's cocoa pecan. Did you only bring me this? Well, what do you want to do? Bring you the whole cake? Yeah, because Portia's going to want no, some. No, just well, you're not going to eat that. Let Portia eat the rest of it. Stop eating it. OK. Stop eating it. <laughs> but I'm going to need this pan back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But it's really delicious. Is it? Yeah, make me another one. OK.